Good, beautiful, wonderful Saturday morning, everybody. Come on in. It's Saturday morning. I'm out on the back porch. I am in the process of getting my uh, uh, screen in porch fixed up for the season. I've been working on it, looking for different stuff, haven't found everything. But this is the before. I've been working on doing a few little things. Working on a few things, y'all. Working on a few things. Just let y'all look all around. I moved my freezer over in the corner right there. So I'm going to come out here on this back porch. I'm getting ready to go to the pottery, Tanya and I. And hopefully can pick up a set tea. I got to repot these flowers here. Into, I'm going to put them in one big old flower pot. And hopefully they'll grow out here. It's sort of shady out here, but we're going to pray the sun shines. I know it does early because I was up at 6.30 this morning. 6.30 to about 8. Maybe the sun's out here real much. And those are some, this is some hosta. I'm putting those hosta in pots. You know, hosta grows real well. And I've got my one beautiful, I don't know if y'all can see it, out there in the yard. One real pretty one I'm going to put up here on the porch. Um, my croton, I'm going to repot all this. So it's going to look a little bit different when I come back later on this afternoon and show y'all the before and after when I get it done. So meanwhile, though, I'm getting ready to cook Kareem some uh, pork chops and corn, his favorite. But the twist on the pork chops today is going to be that I'm going to put some of that smoky paprika seasoning. So hold on just a minute. We're going to go inside and get these pork chops going. Okay, y'all, I'm in the kitchen now. We're getting ready to do these pork chops. I've already um, seasoned them because I wanted them to sort of marinate for at least about 20, 30 minutes before I actually cook them. So what I've got on here, I told you all about this smoked paprika. Of course, I bought this at um, Trader Joe's, but I'm sure you can buy it at most any stores. I guess. I've not seen it at most of the places I went in, but anyway, it was at Trader Joe's. So smoked paprika. It has that good smoky flavor. You don't have to put a lot because you don't want that smoky flavor to take over. But it just adds something to your meat, especially pork. And especially if you're going to put it on the grill, still put a little bit of that paprika. That paprika mixed in with that smoke flavor just does something to your meat. So today we're putting it on our pork chops. Got that grease over there. That uh, Well, not grease, but olive oil getting hot. And I am going to uh, go ahead and put flour on these pork chops. And I'm going to not deep fry, but just pan fry where it will just cover, the oil will cover just one side. Um, let me see how am I going to do it. Okay. Well, like I say, they are nice and seasoned with my everything in the kitchen cabinet seasoning. You know, my uh, seasonal, my, not seasonal, I don't, I don't even buy seasonal because I make my own. Complete seasoning, onion powder, garlic powder paprika, um, my chicken bouillon, dry chicken bouillon, all of those seasons I bought from um, Trader Joe's of uh, the mushroom seasoning, uh, everything, just everything that's in my kitchen cabinet is what I use to make uh, one complete jar, and that way I don't have to go back and forth and take everything out of the cabinet. So when I finish mixing it, this is what it looks like. I got everything, all the in, anything that you got in your kitchen cabinet. Don't put cumin in there now. Don't please don't put cumin, unless you know how to put cumin. You can put a little bit of cumin. Cumin will take over and, and give you a taste that you might not quite want. But when you uh, mix your everything in the kitchen cabinet, it pretty much looks like that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to go ahead, and what I'll do is just pour me some flour on top of these chops, like so. I know pretty much how much it's going to take, and just, you know, flour them up real good, and then go ahead and put them in the pan. Now, you can take a, this is one way to do it, this is just one way that I do it. Put that, that's not the top for that. Maybe that is. That one is. Okay. Make sure it's down on there good, y'all. And make sure you hold it real tight. You know what? I don't care how I do it. Look, look at my stove. I don't care how I do it. 
the one side wasn't together. Y'all know I have to get the flour on there just to let y'all know. I, you know, just to let y'all know it was real flour. And then, you know, it's going to dry me up the wall until I wipe it off. Okay? Yeah. What? So bad? I'm going to get over the sink, y'all, and do this, and I'll be right back. How about that? Pretty much got it. so I say I use probably three fourths of a cup of flour. This is for sort of thin pork chops. Okay, I think that's good now. Let's get it, wipe it off really good. So what have y'all been doing all week? I tell you, um, I am getting rid. I've been all week long. My focus has been on patio furniture. I, I just, I don't need a lot of furniture. I just need, really what I really want and started out wanting was a couch or settee for my screen and porch. And then when you see the difference between the price of a whole set and it just that one piece, you might as well go ahead and buy the whole set. So I might end up with a whole set and I can use the other pieces somewhere else. But I'm focusing on, if I find the couch, that's going to, the love seat rather. Okay, I think that oil is hot. Yeah, that oil is perfectly hot enough. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting my chops in. I've got four nice chops. And like I said, they're not thick chops. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to do two and two. I'm not going to try to, because they're pretty good size. I'm going to do them just two in the pan because I don't want them to get crowded out. And like I told you, uh, Kareem loves uh, corn. So I've got him right here, a can of whole kernel corn or one or, a, or, or eight ounce pack of frozen fresh corn and put a uh, tablespoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and um, a couple of tablespoons of butter. Run it through the microwave or you can put it on top of the stove, however you want to do it. And you got yourself a meal. This is Kareem's favorite. I mean, he's going to be just so excited because today is Saturday. Usually Saturday is like hamburgers, hot dogs, or burritos or something. I did hot dogs yesterday with chili because I was trying, I was on my mission yesterday looking for my furniture. So he'll get a whole cooked meal today. Okay. So we're going to let these cook for about, um, we're going to say about eight minutes on each side. And then, um, eight minutes 16 so they'll be done here in about 20 minutes i think everything will be ready in about 20 minutes so this meal can be on the table in 20 minutes y'all now if you want to do a salad chop some lettuce or just make you a nice green salad or if you want to do some green beans or some green peas or something like that which i would do if i was going to eat it but he's not going to eat nothing with this corn and these four pork chops so guys Hang on just a minute. I'm going to go off and get this flour cleaned up from all my stove, and I shall return. Okay, I've turned the pork chops. They are cooking perfectly. That's a perfect sizzle on those. Um, so now we've got, got about uh, maybe three or four more minutes on that side, and then we'll be ready, ready to take them out. Remember, when you take them out, just put a paper towel and let that oil, excess oil, just drain off of them. And they'll be perfect to bite into. Wonderful, y'all. So we'll be right back. And I've got my corn sitting over there on the side. Just waiting to go into the microwave. So this meal will be ready in another 10 minutes. Okay, y'all. I'm back. And for those of you who don't know it, I am a North Carolina winemaker. Homemade wine, y'all, is what I like to do. I discovered I could do it about three years ago. I haven't done any lately, but what I've done uh, a couple weeks ago, because I had all these beautiful strawberries, it's a pound of strawberries in there, y'all. Two cups of brown sugar, and I filled it up with in this uh, jug to there. Don't ever fill it all the way up to there. Always let it go to there. So you give it a chance to expand and disband. So this is one pound of strawberries, two cups of sugar, and this uh, gallon jug. And just fill it up, not all the way up now, just right there. And then in about two or three days, 
Remember what I told y'all about backing that? For those of you who remember, you have to back the lid off because what it does, let me see, I don't know if you can hear this. You can hear it very faintly. But what happens is, see, I've already backed this off earlier and that um, the acidity in the fruit causes it to ferment and when it ferments, it swells and it fizzes. You get that fizz in there. So when I uh, release that gas, gas is what it is. It gassed all the way up to there. But when the air hits it, the gas dissipates. So it's had time to settle down. And so what I do is just tighten that lid right back on there. But every couple of three days, strawberries, peaches. Oh, let's see. What else have I done? The strawberries, peaches. Now grapes, blueberries. Grapes and grapes and blueberries are the other two fruits that I use. I rarely use any other fruit. Um, Y'all, excuse me a minute. I need to get the last of these chops out. I'm over on the other side of the room, y'all excuse me a minute, I don't want my chop to burn. Okay, got my chops out, sorry about that. But I had to, I had, to, I was listening to them, they were telling me, come on, get me out, come on, get me out. But anyway, this is the simplest thing to do, as far as I'm concerned. It's real, real, real simple to do. Right there, this is some rosemary. I bought that yesterday, so I'm going to... Uh, Put it in another pot, and I'm going to grow me some my own rosemary. Because I love rosemary chicken, so I thought, why not? So I got me a little rosemary plant, and I'm going to uh, put it out there on the back porch as soon as I find another pot to put it in. But anyway, back to this strawberry wine. It was very simple to make. One pound of strawberries, two cups of brown sugar, or white sugar if you don't have brown. Uh, let it sit there and ferment. Now, this has only been making for two this is the second week strawberries and peaches ferment fast now peaches you have to really watch them they'll blow the top off because they have so much acid in them and they will firm and peaches will start fermenting in two or three days once you tighten you know, put that sugar in there with them because you know sugar makes uh fermentation as well i don't use any yeast in mine so mine is just a natural fermentation along with the sugar i've never used yeast at all and it makes a really good strawberry wine if you like if you drink wine if you don't fine if you know somebody that does it's just something else to do um that i enjoy doing and have always i hadn't done any wine gosh since the pandemic and you know i kept wondering why don't you make some wine you could do that I just, until one day last week, I had all strawberries, so I'll be making some throughout the summer. But these, these strawberries are really good. They're very tasty. When I let, when I back the um, gases out of the other day, I saw the taste of it. It's already sweet. I don't need to add, in, add any more sugar. Now, let me say this about using grapes. If you ever decide to make a grape uh, wine from using grapes, you put, have to put sugar in almost every time that you back that uh, gas off. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, pound of strawberries, two cups of sugar, and fill it up with water to that point right there. Tighten that lid down, and in about two or three days, go ahead and check it out and make sure because it for it'll ferment in about four days. This one did it ferment. If you know, and I, again, it depends on how how much uh, acid is in that particular fruit. Anyway, just wanted to share that with y'all while I was finishing my pork chops. I didn't realize they were that near being done. So what I'm going to do is go over here to the stove now, and we're going to finish off our pork chop situation. So over to the stove. The corn is ready. The chops are ready. Get that oil. Oh, spill oil on the stove. So listen, guys. Continue to pray without ceasing. Doing something good for someone. Uh, praying without ceasing. Always, always, always remember a kind word turns away wrath. I don't know who that's for, but I do know that it's a good thing to know.
that when uh, things are getting heated sometimes with people, uh, didn't happen to me, but it happened with somebody I was around last week, and it's amazing how those kind of things uh, can escalate. And sometimes it's about basically nothing. Okay, um, let's get these. I'm getting my paper off my chops. You know, I tell you, you have to go ahead and put some um, paper towels under those chops or chicken or whatever you're cooking like that when you're frying stuff. Let's go ahead and do that and get all that oil drained off of them. So there's those beautiful pork chops. They are ready to be eaten. It's my skillet back there. I got it covered. So I'm getting ready to get myself dressed. Man, man, or oh, TJ has a game today, y'all. So y'all keep him high and lifted that he plays his best game ever, that his team will win today, and um, all will be well. They got to travel, safe travel for them. Uh, I am going to get those pictures together somehow and put them up so y'all can see uh, TJ in his uniform. This kid has grown so much. He has turned out to be this uh, big old football player dude. I'm telling y'all, my grandson is a football player dude, y'all. And he looks so good in his uniform. So I want you all to continue to keep him lifted up in prayer, as I know you do. But today, like I said, they're playing a game today in another town about an hour away. So y'all just keep him high and lifted now. And pray that they win this game, bring home that victory, uh, either through what happens on the scoreboard or the fact that they played their best game. Because I, I try to teach them, you know, no matter what the scoreboard says, as long as you play your best game when you're playing in competitive sports, you are a winner because you put forth your best effort, which is all can be expected of anybody doing anything. So I, I teach them, you know, how kids sometimes they get upset. Coach too, they get upset because they don't win. You know, they sometimes they start saying, you know, somebody cheated, and this, that, and the third. And so I told them, I said, we're gonna always pray for good teammates, a uh, opposing team, and your personal team. Good coaching, good referees, and good scorekeepers. So when you know all those things are in place, you know you've done your best. Win, lose, or draw. When you do your best, you can't get no better than that. So, anywho, y'all, uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you for your blessings, your well wishes, your gifts. Always for my children, for my grandchildren, great grandchildren, and your prayers as you pray along with me. I uh, checked in with, uh, with, with TJ. I said, "Now, grades good." He, he said, "Of course, Grandma." He's such a little gentleman. Of course, Grandma, because, you know, we talk, we share with you that he is a reader. He loves to read, and he is very proficient in math and science. I'm about to cry. Um, just thinking about how good he is, at, and he's such a gentle giant. And that is the thing that I always pray, that he keeps that spirit about him. No matter how big you get, how good you are, don't, don't let anybody take that that goodness he's just a good-hearted kind-hearted kid and i want him to remain that way throughout his life because it'll take him a long 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 way so anywho y'all because I'm, I'm about to tear up here i wish i could be there at the game but it's, it's uh not possible this weekend i have gotten to see him play one game and i had to contain myself now he did good they won that game this one I won't be able to attend, but I am. My prayers are with him. I spoke to him this morning. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be taking him to the school to be picked up. So I'll see him just before the game. I always pray with and for him and for his teammates. So guys, listen. Keep those prayers going up so the blessings will continue to come down. Pray for my grandchild. Pray for TJ. Pray for men, man. Pray that they play the best game ever today and that they get there safe and sound and we see them back here in town and that all is well, no injuries sustained, uh, good sportsmanship, all that. We have to pray and lift our children up that they know how to go through life where they know a kind word does turn away wrath and to do good as often as possible is the way God would have us to do it. So again, keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down. Continue to pray without ceasing. Do something kind for someone. 
A word, a deed, a card, a phone call, or a text will uplift somebody's spirits like you would never think. So, until I decide to cook again, which will be tomorrow on the Flavor Train, y'all, I'm going to say love you guys. Have a blessed, wonderful rest of the day. Toodaloo!